The 2020 college football schedules are out. Well, sort of, right? We know the dates and the opponent. Uh, clearly, we don't know the uh, the TV or the time yet. Those things typically aren't announced till a couple of weeks before each game during the season. But we know who we're playing. We know what day we're playing them on. And this is going to be a series of videos where I go team by team and preview some of the 2020 college football schedules. I'm going to create a playlist. I'll put a link to it up here somewhere. You can click that link. It'll take you to the entire playlist where it will include every single team that I've covered so far. We're going to get started right now. Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today. So thanks for watching. Man, sure to appreciate it also. And too, in addition to that as well, subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year. And sometimes they're even watchable. I, I don't know about this one. Uh, we'll see. Give this video a thumbs up. Uh, it doesn't take you any time or cost you any money. Just hit the thumbs up button. It's a huge help. Uh, to me, we're doing these season preview videos and, oh, oh my Jesus H. Christ. Holy moly. What in the, man, this thing looks good. Look, just, just look at it. Oh my God. Uh, uh, good morning and that shout out to you, Celine Driver. Thank you for the hat, sir. Man, this thing looks good. Uh, Uncle Lou's XFL team to Tampa Bay. Vipers, Aaron Murray at quarterback. Yeah, I know they got smoked this past weekend. Hashtag, I don't care. We just, well, They signed Antonio Callaway. Listen, it was all the receiver's fault. They signed Antonio Callaway yesterday. All is solved. All the problems are gone now. Tampa Bay won't lose another game the rest of the season. I'm not worried, Celine Driver. Salute, sir. Thank you for the hat. It means a lot. Uh, and I tell you what we'll do for you, sir. We will preview Florida Gators 2020 schedule. Let's go. All right, shout out again to Celine Driver for sending me uh, the hat. And, and please, some of you need to listen to this part closely. Closer. Notice I took the stickers off. Come on. Shout out to Celine Driver, though. Thank you for sending me the hat, sir. I really, really appreciate it. Celine Driver is also a supporter of the Uncle Lou channel over on the Patreon page, and he suggested this Florida Gators season preview video. I hope you enjoy it, sir. Uh, this one is for you. All right, we'll briefly recap 2019 uh, schedule for the Florida Gators, and then we'll move on to 2020 and see what that schedule looks like. Here's the 2019 schedule, whichever I don't pick a side. Any side doesn't matter. Uh, it might matter. No, it does it matter. Stop talking to yourself. I, I'm talking to them. You know, you know, you're literally talking to yourself. 2019 Florida Gators schedule. Let's take a look at it. Started off with Miami, and then you had a bye week. Now Florida had a weird schedule in that they actually had three bye weeks. Everyone had two because of the extra week in the year. Uh, last year during football season, Miami actually had three. Their first game against Miami was originally scheduled for week one. It then got moved back a week to the quote unquote week zero. Uh, so they had a bye week in everyone else's week one. But you started off with Miami week zero. You beat them 24 to 20. No one really knew what to make of that game at the time. Uh, we didn't know how good or bad Miami was. And therefore, it was hard really to judge Florida. A lot of people had an idea that Probably Miami wasn't that good. They were in a first-year coaching staff, and most people, I think, thought Florida would handle Miami more comfortably. But nevertheless, you did get the win, 24-20 to non-con game, bye week. Then you had at home UT Martin. You roasted them 45 to nothing. Then your SEC schedule started on the road at Kentucky, where you got revenge from a loss the year before to Kentucky at home the first time they had beat you since the late 80s. Dan Mullen really uh, came in with a bang. You get revenge. You beat them 29 to 21 on the road. That was, of course, the game where Felipe Franks went down and Kyle Trask took over. And again, that goes into the category of we really didn't know what to make of that at the time. Turns out Kyle Trask had a pretty good year. 
You come back home then for uh, several home games in a row, starting with Tennessee, who you handled 34 to three. Another non-con game here. No, no uh, what what a shocker! It's at home in the state of Florida. Uh, amazing, Towson. You beat them 38 to nothing, and then Auburn. A uh, good win over Auburn, 24 to 13 at home. Then you went on the road to LSU. That's where you caught your first loss of the season. Now, by this point in the season, people were starting to recognize that LSU was a really, really good team, right? They beat Texas early on. We had heard they were revamping their offense. But by this point in the season, people's eyes were really starting to open. Burrow was a, a bona fide Heisman contender by this point in the season. You had to go on the road and play them there. And you actually gave them a pretty good game most of the way. Um, I, even though you lost by 14, this game was never really a blowout, at least in my mind. You were able to move the ball and score some points uh, and, and made it, at least I think, a respectable game. But you did lose to the eventual national champs, 42-28. to Back-to-back -back road games, you then traveled to Columbia, South Carolina, where you handled the Gamecocks 38-27. to That took you into your second bye week, uh, your traditional bye week that you have every year right before the cocktail party against uh, Georgia. You lost 24 to 17. There's a big game coming up next on CBS, Georgia at Auburn. Maybe your thoughts on that game? Yeah, War Eagle. <laughs> uh, then you had a home game against Vandy. You beat them 56 to 0 at Mizzou, 23 to 6, last bye week of the year. And then your in state uh, yearly rivalry game against Florida State, where you handled them. Uh, they had no coach at this point in the season, and you beat them 40 to 17. Some things that stand out to me about the schedule, just the schedule in 2019 was yet another year gone by where Florida played a grand total of zero non-conference games outside of the state of Florida. You got to go all the way back to, I believe it was 1988 or 1989 to find a game Florida played in the non-con outside of the state of Florida. We know they play Florida State every year and that alternates home and home. So yeah, you get a non-con road game, but that's against Florida State. That's in Florida. You played Miami several times over the last 30 years. That's a, a game that's played in the state of Florida, whether you play at home or away. Florida has not played a non-conference opponent outside of the state of Florida in the regular season since 1989. Absolutely ridiculous. UT Martin, you played them at home. Towson, you played them at home. It is what it is. Uh, you finished 10-2 uh, and two in the regular season, which is uh, one game improvement over the previous season where you were 9-3. and three. I know you went, uh, what was it, 11-2 overall with a win in the bowl game, but we're comparing regular season schedules here uh, for the purposes of this video. So Dan Mullen's second year, 10-2 in the regular season, 9-3 and three the season before. So one game improvement. How'd you do overall? Well, the non-con, you went 4-0 and oh in the non-con. Pretty good wins against Miami and Florida State, and then you get those two home wins against UT Martin and Towson, you handled them no problem at all. On the road, you went three and one, and that's not easy to do in any conference, let alone the SEC, but you did go three and one on the road. You beat uh, Kentucky, you beat South Carolina, and you beat Mizzou all on the road. And then, of course, you had the loss on the road at LSU, and your second loss came on a neutral site field against Georgia in Jacksonville at the cocktail party. Your toughest stretch of games was probably week seven, eight, and nine when you played Auburn at home. Uh, that was a big game. You got the win. You had to turn right around the following week and go on the road to LSU where you caught your first loss and then back-to-back -back road games, finish up that three-game swing on the road at South Carolina where you got to win 38-27. to So overall, uh, three and one on the road, toughest stretch of games, seven, eight, nine. You went two and one there, four and oh in the non-con. Pretty good year for Florida. Clearly, they want more. They want to win the division, make it to Atlanta, get a shot at the SEC title in the playoffs, and maybe they'll get that in 2020. We'll see. Uh, but that's it for 2019. Let's put the 2020 schedule up on the screen. We'll go through it. Is it harder, easier, harder, more road games, less road games? Will this be the year Florida finally travels outside of their own state to play a non-conference road game? No, it won't. Uh, let's look at the schedule here. 2020, you start off at home with a non-con uh, opponent that doesn't reside in the state of Florida, which means it's a home game. Eastern Washington, you get them at home. Then you start your SEC schedule at home with Kentucky and then another non-con game at home, South Alabama. So you start off two non-con and an SEC game, all three at home, Eastern Washington, Kentucky, and South Alabama. Probably be favored in all three of those games. I don't think anybody will be surprised if you end up 3-0 after that stretch. Then you have your first road game, a rivalry game on the road at a improving, slowly, maybe, Tennessee team. Um, Tennessee 
wants to win one of their big four games this year. Um, right? They started out terrible last year. Uh, this isn't a Tennessee video. We don't need to go down that road. But Tennessee plays Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and Oklahoma this year. They're probably going to be underdogs in all four of those games. Tennessee wants to win at least one of them. I mean, they want to win them all. I get that. It's the offseason. Everyone's undefeated. But at the end of the season, if Tennessee is sitting at 9-3 and three and there are only three losses, which are three of those four teams I just named, they'd be pretty happy. Don't let it be you. You got to go on the road, play at Rocky Top week four. After that, you get back-to-back -back home games against South Carolina and LSU before wrapping up uh, the first half of the season on the road at Ole Miss. That takes you into your bye week, uh, one bye week in 2020, back to normal now. You come out of your bye week, uh, this is your typical bye week here, and then you play Georgia in the cocktail party. One of, if not the most difficult games on your schedule this year. We'll see what LSU looks like now that they've lost um, a lot of that offense and a lot of their coaches. That'll be a difficult game too, but you have Georgia here. Then you go on the road against Vandy, back-to-back -back home games, Mizzou, and another non-con home game against New Mexico State. And then you finish up on the road at FSU, year one of a new coaching staff there. Not sure what to expect from them this year. So that's the 2020 Florida schedule. That's what it looks like. That's how it breaks down. Your non-con schedule, Eastern Washington at home, South Alabama at home, New Mexico State at home, Florida State on the road. But of course, Florida State is in the state of Florida. So here we are again. Another year goes by with Florida to chicken shit to schedule a non-con game outside of the state of Florida. 30 years and counting. What a shame. Uh, but that's your non-con schedule. Your road games, you have four road games and a neutral site game. All four of your, or three of your road games are SEC. One of them is non-con, the Florida State game. You play at Tennessee, at Ole Miss, at Vandy, and then at FSU in the non-con. And you have the neutral site game in Jacksonville against Georgia. So four road games and a neutral site game. Toughest stretch of games, probably week four, five, six, and seven. At Tennessee, home to South Carolina, home to LSU, and then on the road at Ole Miss. Clearly, LSU, the toughest of those four. At least it appears that way in the offseason. Maybe Tennessee has improved. Maybe South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina, no way they can be as bad as they were last year, right? Uh, Will Muschamp, I hold my beer. Yeah, they might be as bad as they were last year, at least in terms of overall record. Their schedule is brutal again. Uh, but that's probably your toughest four-game stretch right there. Four, five, six, seven at Tennessee. Home against South Carolina. Home against LSU on the road at Ole Miss. Your toughest games, probably that LSU and Georgia game. We'll see how Tennessee and South Carolina end up looking. We'll see how Florida State ends up looking with that new coaching staff. But that's sort of how it looks right now. Um, th there'll be some comments down there. Yeah, I know that at some point in the future, down the road, you've already scheduled non-con games out of the state of Florida. But those games ain't been played yet. Jack and these games scheduled years in advance get canceled all the time. I'm not saying that will or won't happen with Florida. The only thing we know for sure is that it's 30 plus years and counting since you've had the balls to schedule a non-con game out of the state of Florida. That's absolutely ridiculous. Hard to defend that. And to be honest with you, if I was a Florida fan who liked going to a lot of games, that would that I mean that would piss me off to be honest. I mean, think about Georgia going to play at Notre Dame, Georgia going to play at Oklahoma State, at Arizona State. These are all away games that Georgia has had over the last 10 years or so to teams uh, that we traditionally don't play. And fans love to make those trips. Now, from purely a winning game standpoint, you probably have the right idea. Problem is, you ain't been able to capitalize on it, uh, at least not in the 12 years uh, that has gone by since the last time you managed to win your conference, which seems like a lifetime ago because basically, well, basically it was. Would that change in 2020? Maybe. Uh, this is not the most difficult schedule in the world. You only have four true road games. Most teams play at least five true road games. You only have four true road games. You have the one neutral site game against UGA. Some of your tougher games this year come at home, LSU, South Carolina. You do go on the road to play Tennessee. You do go on the road to play Florida State. Um, if Tennessee and Florida State are your two toughest road games, that's not the worst schedule I've ever seen, right? So a pretty favorable schedule, I think, this year for Florida. I think it's probably going to come down to the Georgia game like it has the last couple of years, and we'll see which way the cookie crumbles on that one. But anyway, that's it. A preview of the Florida Gators 2020 football schedule. Let me know down below. What do you guys think? What games are you excited about? Uh, are there any potential landmines on this schedule? Clearly, we know LSU and Georgia are going to be 
some amount of good. We don't know how good, but are there any other teams on here? Or how about this? Outside of LSU and Georgia, if you had to pick one of these games that you think Florida is most likely to stumble, most likely to lose, besides LSU or Georgia, who would it be? Would it be at Tennessee, at Florida State? Does South Carolina catch them sleeping this year? Uh, I don't know. Let me know down below. Appreciate you guys watching. Have a good morning, Nat.